realize one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. And here's your host, Miss Kim Rodman. So uh, 
I'm going to go back just a little bit, just a little bit, uh, because uh, what I want to talk about is parents and the importance of being a great parent. You know what? There's no such thing as a perfect parent, but we can all strive to be better parents. But now, let me tell you this. Just because someone may have given birth to you and and even raised you uh, to a certain level or age in your life doesn't make them the best role model. Uh, And not all parents are great role models. Some parents are just that. They're just parents. They make mistakes. And they do things that, you know what, are, well, a little unorthodox or unconventional. But I tell you what, this right here is going to help those parents see that they're not, well, they're just not role models. And they can do better and be better, all right? And uh, this segment is, again, not every parent is a role model, okay? And I want you all to understand that not every parent is a role model, okay? Number one. Not every parent is a role model. <laughs> I'm going to be a blessing of the curse. <laughs> Look here. Not every parent is a role model. For instance, if both of your parents speak at their, if they speak at your eighth grade career day about working together, there ain't nothing wrong with that. But if they speak about working together and he's a pimp, and she is his highest earning girl. That ain't no role model. See, working together is one thing, but if your daddy is a pimp and your mama is one of his best girls, that really ain't role model material. There's something wrong with that. Again, I'll be a blessing and a curse. There's going to be some people that's going to realize they're horrible parents or horrible role models, and they're going to be better just because of this. Uh, number two. Not every parent is a role model. Now, look here. If your dad go around telling people that he was a prisoner of war while serving in the Salvation Army, come on. <laughs> that ain't a role model. <laughs> Even the Salvation Army. You know, you don't get drafted for that, okay? <laughs> you can just walk through the doors and just go to walking through the aisles, okay? Come on now. Don't, don't do that. Not every parent is a role model. Number three, not every parent is a role model. Now, look here. Your mother makes extra money, which ain't nothing wrong with hustling. But if your mother makes extra money by selling your urine to people who need to pass a drug test for their new job, that ain't no role model. <laughs> the devil is a lie. That ain't no role model. I respect the hustle, but... I, I I just can't respect the reason, okay? Again, I'm going to be a blessing, not a curse. Number four, look here. Not every parent is a role model. They're not. Now, if your mother revealed to you that when you were a baby, that sometimes she would get off work and she'd be just a little too tired to breastfeed you. So what she would do is she'd let the family dog nurse you with the rest of her puppies. Exactly. How sick is that? You, you're getting breast milk, but it's breast milk from a dog. Your mama let me. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. I know she worked hard. I know she worked overtime. But come on now. Not every parent is a role model, okay? Again, I'm helping people today. Number five, not every parent is a role model. If your parents make you crawl through the neighbor's doggy door and steal food out of their refrigerator when they're not home, that ain't no role model. <laughs> that ain't no role model. They got you. <sighs> Number six, not every parent is a role model. Look here. If you see your parents take food off people's plate while they saying the blessings over their food, that ain't no role model. That's, you know what? That right there is. How do you look at somebody? How do you look at somebody and say, if you literally see them steal food off of people's plate while they said the grace? They ain't no old one of y'all. That's a thief. That's a thief. That's a greedy thief. And that's a low-down, dirty scumbag of a dog. 
Not everybody in this world, mother, y'all. Come on. And, and here we go. Lord Jesus, number seven. Not every parent is a role model. Look here, your mama gets arrested for stealing from a yard sale. You know what? First of all, she had to have had a better plan. She had. How your mama going to get arrested for stealing from a yard sale? If she's awaited to the end of the day, whatever was left over, they'd have probably gave her. Again, not every parent is a role model. No, man. Not every parent is a role model. Why is it your dad is selling weed to make money to buy crack cocaine? Not every parent is a role model. Number nine, not every parent is a role model. Wow. Your parents homeschool you, and y'all homeless. You know what? Right? If they don't put you in school so you at least have one good meal during the day, come on now. That don't make no doggone sense. How do you homeschool you and y'all homeless? The school always moving. And and number 10, not every parent is a role model. Oh, Jesus. Your daddy got a tattoo of his eyeballs on his eyelids. So it looked like he just always stared. Even when he's sleeping, he, he, he awake. He's looking at you in his sleep. What, what kind of sister does that make? People don't understand. You do stuff like this. I, I know it might seem cool. It might seem cute right now. But eventually, you will get older. And it's going to look, you know, it's, it's going to go from ridiculous to stupid. Come on now. Parents, do better and be better. Because not every parent is a role model. All right? Again, I just want to be a blessing and not a curse. All right. Uh, now, next, again, again, we're having a blast from the past. I'm so happy you guys joined me because I feel really good about this. Now, I've uh, written over 780,000 original songs. Some of, them have been, some of the songs have been as short as two, three words. Some of them have been as long as 30 to 40 words. But I tell you what, what I've been able to do is I've been able to sing songs that have touched people's lives, inform people, empower them. And that's all I want to do. I want to be a blessing and not a curse, okay? I also dabble in a little poetry. <laughs> and uh, I want to do a couple of original poems, okay? Uh, because um, what I want to do is I want to show people that there's other ways to express yourself and show your talent to be a blessing in helping people. It ain't always got to be preaching. You can do it through other forms, like poetry. So here we go. Uh, and this poem is called, I Just Want to Have Your Back, Baby. Mm-hmm. This right here is a love poem. So I need all the lovers in the house to grab hold of that significant other, whether it's your wife, it's your husband, it's your fiance, whoever it is. Just grab a hold to them and listen to this one. And I want you to to read along with me or recite it or just close your eyes and stay in the moment. Again, it's called, I just want to have your back, baby. You say you don't need a nasty man. You say you don't need a man that's always playing. You say you want a man to be your friend, somebody to stand by you through thick and thin. A man that will never cheat on you and be there to the very end. That's when I look you in your eyes. I take you by the hand, and to your surprise, I spin you around. I look you up and down. I give your butt a smack. I don't care about none of that. I just want to have your back. <laughs> Did you hear what I just want you to think about what that love poem is saying Look, I don't care about the emotions of it. I don't care about the feelings I don't care about the heart 
felt intimacy. You looking for somebody that's going to be there for you. I don't care about all that. You're looking for somebody that's going to be a rock, a shoulder for you to cry on. I don't care about none of that. You're looking for somebody that's going to make you feel safe and secure. Man, whatever. Okay. If it happens, it happens. All I want to know is, do you care if I have your back? Because ultimately, that's all I'm after anyway. <laughs> Ladies, can I have your back? <laughs> anyway, I'm telling you, that is, woo, that's his love right there. That's love right there. Uh, this one here, again, these are original poems of love. This one is called, I'm Too Good For You. <laughs> Fellas, ladies, I know that you've been involved with someone, whether it's uh, through a casual relationship or uh, even marriage. I know you've been involved with someone where, someone where you felt that you know over a course of time, whether it's a day, a week, a month, a year, or 10 years, where you come to realize that you are just too good for this person. What are you doing? You deserve better. Well, this poem is inspired by just that thought process. And it's called, I'm Too Good For You. Mm-hmm. Here we go. Love poems. Poems from the heart. I'm too good for you. You will never catch me cheating. I'm too sneaky for you. I'm too good for you. Your family say, I'm a crackhead. Girl, tweaking for you. I'm too good for you. If you wanted to see your stepsister, I had her up in my room. You just missed her. I'm too good for you. What you don't know and won't find out is that being low down and dirty is what I'm all about. I'm too good for you. I am too good for you. You never catch me. I'm too quick. Call me Moto. I'm just too slick. I'm too good for you. <laughs> I want you to think about the meaning of the words to that poem. That's a love poem, y'all. Ladies, I'm too good for you. Okay? Money misses out of your purse. And it's just me and you in the room. You ain't see me take it. You have no proof. You know why? Because I'm too good for you. <laughs> If you find out that I've been cheating on you, but you've never actually seen me, again, who do you believe? Word on the streets? <laughs> I'm too good for you. Now, well, ladies, what I'm telling you, that is a law poem. I'm too good for you. But yet and still, I managed to stay around. <laughs> I guess I'm just old sentimental fool. I guess I give too much of myself. I care too much about others than I care about myself. To stick around and hang around with somebody that I'm too good for. Ladies, I'm too good for That's a love poem right there. That is a love poem. Mm -hmm. I move right along. I told you. I told you. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo. Lord Jesus. Uh, Next, we're going to get to the... uh, Staple, one of the staples of the Thunder with Nuts with Dre. I tell you, it's going to be a blessing and a curse tonight for us. Of course, this is the out of order. Now, you know what? This out of order, this has really changed some lives. It's giving some people some insight uh, and, and causes them to just take a long look at themselves and discover that there are things and, and, and situations about themselves and things and, and situations that they're in that they can just change for the better. You know, uh, if you're out of order, you need to do things to get yourself in order, all right? And I believe it's my duty to help those that are out of order get in order, all right? Out of order could be you, 
course, it could be a family member. It could be a, a friend, somebody you work with, somebody you see at your local grocery store, somebody that you run across uh, at the bank, or somebody you see in passing as you're walking to the park on a beautiful sunny day. I believe it's my duty and obligation to point out things to people that are out of order and get them back in order so they can stay in order. Yes. Yeah. So here we go, out of order. If you don't recognize any of these and anybody you know, that's because it's all you. you completely out of order. Let's go. Let's get it in. <laughs> uh, number one, if you got your gas and electric bill in your seven-year-old child's name, and that was the only reason you gave him the same name as you, you're out of order. So basically, you're going to jack up your son's credit. Or you're going to jack up your daughter's credit. You set out with a plan the minute they was born. That's one. Uh, number two, you had an order. If this is you. If you buy dog food, but you don't like to share it with the dog. Oh, wait a minute. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. You're going to buy some dog food, but well, who the food is for? That's why it's called dog food. It's for the dog. Now you get you didn't bought the dog food, but you won't you don't like to share it with the dog. You get mad when he come and try to eat out the plate. Well, you eating his food. <laughs> you out of order. Number three. Mm-hmm. Look here. If you get fired from your job on your day off, you out of order. You know you must be a pretty pathetic employee. To get fired on your day off. You ain't even working that day and get fired. <laughs> Again, I want to be a blessing, not a curse. Stop it. Look here. If this is you, you out of order. If you're a man and you need a breast reduction, come on. And not stop it. Stop it. I mean, if, if you got on a T-shirt with a sports bra on, then you, 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 that's, that's, that's too much. Huh? It's too much. Stop it. If you don't tighten that thing up and work out, push away from the table and do some push-ups, do some, some chin-ups, or, uh, 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 go to the gym, do some bench presses. If you don't flatten them things out, get them square. They ain't supposed to be like no ovals. They're supposed to be, ovals is like ovaries, and women got those. It's, they ain't supposed to be square. Square them things up. Square your chest up. I'm telling you, it don't make no dog go sense. If this is you, you out of order. I'm a, that's right. Get mad. If this is you, you out of order. If you're trying to pick up white women wearing an O.J. Simpson T-shirt, you know what? You out of order. Lord Jesus. <laughs> if you got three kids laid by three different men and they all the same age, wait a minute. <laughs> that means you was pregnant. You had sex. And then you had and then you got pregnant again and then had sex again. You know what? That don't make no doubt no sense. <laughs> so you got three kids by three different men in your belly. And they they literally weeks apart. That don't make no doubt no sense. Okay. Again, I want to be a blessing and not a curse. That's nasty. Uh we can. Uh if this is you, you show sure enough out of order. If you're at Target shopping for a VCR, you're out of order. First of all, they don't make the VCR no more. What is a VCR? <laughs> if this is you, you're out of order. Look here. If your hair so nappy, you got to take a pain shot before you comb it. You're out of order. You know what? Just cut it off. Start from scratch. Start from scratch. It don't make no doubt no difference. You don't put yourself through that. If this is you, you out of order. Lord Jesus. <laughs> if this is you, you show enough out of order. If you draw a Social Security disability check for your body odor, you out of order. It don't make no doubt no sense. Stop it. Look here, if this is you, you out of order. <laughs> if you take your eight-year-old daughter 
with you to the club because the babysitter canceled at the last minute. You know what? They don't, they don't think she was looking. Ain't no party that important, okay? Stop it. Stop it. It don't make no doggone sense. You don't, you don't stay home and try to raise that daughter the right way. Come on now. Oh, Jesus. Again, I want to be a blessing and not a curse, all right? Look here. If you're on your way to take a drug test for your new job and you get pulled over and arrested for DUI, you have to order. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Again, you guys don't know. You guys don't know. It, it don't make no doggone sense. Quit playing with yourselves, okay? Again, I want to be a blessing and not a curse. Now, also, I want you to know that, well, there are things going on in this world that we might not agree with. But just because we don't agree with them don't mean they're wrong. Don't mean they're right necessarily, but it don't mean they're wrong. I'll give you an example. Things going on in the world that I don't agree with but don't necessarily make it wrong, don't make it right. There's some things that happened that I had a problem with, but you know what? It might have been personal. For instance, the Aretha Franklin funeral. I had a problem with how long it was. Okay? Especially they it didn't seem like they had no intermissions or nothing. It was just straight through 17 and a half hours. I had a problem with that. But then when I think about it and I look back, well, Aretha Franklin, she seemed to sleep through the whole thing. You know what? I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that she was tired of it. But, hey, that's just my personal opinion. Another thing, you know, a uh, thing that happened. Well, R. Kelly came out, and they did the interview with Gail King. Uh, he did the interview with Gail King, and he, he said that, you know, that, that he was a victim. I didn't agree with that. I didn't agree with that. I don't think he's a victim. Uh, I think he's just stupid. I think he's perfect. But see, that's just me. And apparently, he had two people that stood up for him. Um, apparently, they were two of his love slaves. Hmm. That's just me. Things that I didn't agree with, I had a problem with, that, you know, could have been personal. President Donald Trump. Uh, why does he look like cotton candy? But he managed to stay on his head. What type of glue is he using? It's got to be Gorilla Glue. Because it's always hanging on. I mean, the, 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 the rain, the sleet, the snow, the wind, it'll blow it all over the place. But you know what? It never blows off his head. <laughs> I don't know what kind of glue he's using. But, hey, that's my personal opinion. That's my personal feeling. Don't make it wrong. Don't make it right. Oh, this one right here. This one right here. I tell you what. This one right here. Uh, you know, I'm gonna say this, and I don't want to offend anybody. Okay, See, I don't want to offend nobody. But this one right here. Uh, I read a thing about gays in the military and homosexuals in the military. And they said, "Well, they should be the fight." Now I'm gonna tell you here. I I don't mind them fighting in the military. I rather them fighting in the military than uh, in the grocery store, in the bank, or outside of high school where my kids at. Let them fight overseas. Take that mess over there. But then again, that's just my own personal opinion. And finally, last but not least, <sighs> slot machines in the church. You know what? I don't have a problem with it. That's my personal opinion. You say, how can you have? How can you not have a problem with slot machines in the church? Well, I figure right here as it goes, some of these preachers right here, they all about money anyway. So if they all about money, you might as well have a chance to win back some of the money that they've taken from you. And that's my personal opinion. <laughs> don't make it wrong. Don't make it right. You all, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and pray us out. And like I always do, I ask you that, please, or here's a bow, or eyes are closed, unless, of course, you're blind, and it really don't matter, does Oh, Lord, we thank you for another Sunday when that's what you We thank you for another opportunity to come together in fun, faith, and fellowship. 
Thank you for making a way out of no way for us and opening doors that no man can close. We thank you for loving us more than we could ever love you or ourselves. But most of all, we just thank you for being God and God alone. Lord Jesus, you are a heart fixer and a mind regulator. Lord Jesus, we thank you for what you've done, what you're doing, and what you've done that we don't even realize because you're always working on our behalf and standing in the gap. Thank you for being a head to protect and around us. Now bless us and keep us until we come together for another appointed time and another appointed place, even if it's this one. We thank you and we praise you. Amen. Amen. Now you know what I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> I can't wait the next time in because I'm going to have a special guest. And y'all don't want to miss this guy. He's coming in, and, and, and I've been working to get him in here for about the last two months. And finally, the schedule is freed up, and he will be here next Sunday. So you don't want to miss it. A special guest next Sunday with us with Dre, and hmm, there you go. You guys take care. I love you. There's nothing you can do about it. And you try to stop my love, I hurt you. I hurt you back because my love hurts. It bites. It scratches. It kicks. It punches. That's just how much I love you. You all have a great night. Goodbye. Check this out, right? Check this out, right? Don't never be ashamed of who you are. If you serve God and serve God proudly. The fact is, you should be celebrated. They sitting laughing at me. They thought I wouldn't make it. That's why I'm laughing back and waving at you haters. And if you never listen to this song, never pass it on. I just pray to God that you would come to see the throne. Cause we gon' celebrate. And no matter what they gon' say. If they put us in the grave, I guarantee we elevate. So let the haters hate. Cause we gon' celebrate. They put us in the grave. Your boy gon' elevate. I'm on the Okay.